It's time to babble the fuck on. It's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. I've, I've never said this before. It is Saturday morning <laughs> in Chicago, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. At Chronicon, the first ever Chronicon, ladies and gentlemen. And it's time to babble the fuck out. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Hey! Hi, gang. I know we've started doing earlier Babylon. <laughs> But this is fucking ridiculous. Yes, this is, this is the Babylon Gospel Brunch. So, <laughs> so early and stuff. Babylon let's, let's Brunch. Let's pass the plate. What Truly, yeah. yes. Have you even eaten breakfast? No, sir. No. Um, Celsius is mine. A great breakfast. Yeah, it is. This is our very first Babylon in Chicagoland, in the area of Chicago. Is that right? We have been promising them a Babel for about 14 years now, and... My God, so we were like, all right, if you want to come out to the airport. <laughs> that's right. So that's, uh, that's something that's special. Also, I'm happy to announce, well, not really happy, but uh, this is the first Babylon I'll ever be doing sober. <laughs> the very first one ever. Now, is yeah, that... I'm not happy about it either, so save <laughs> your booze. <laughs> is that because you're like turning over a new leaf? No, it's just I couldn't get to the bar in time before I got here. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, for God's sakes. But if you could get access to booze, you would drink this early? Fuck yeah. Can we get some fucking liquor, please? Look at everybody standing up. Old style. Uh, I'm not a vodka man, but thank you, sir. God bless you. Also, never drink from an open container. Jesus Christ. <laughs> My man has a flask as well. He's like, this is the only way I'm getting through Chronica. Have you been tested? You're fine. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, so much better. <laughs> Cut to a half hour from now, ambulance pulling up. <laughs> Unknown podcast, you're dosed with PCP. <laughs> Kevin James looks on. <laughs> what an uh, amazing that, event this is. Thank is. you for doing this for all of us oh to make God. this all happen. Stop. I, um, I, I didn't do this for you. Uh, I, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> nor did I do it for them. I did it for me. Um, this is the kind of thing I need as somebody who can't validate in his own existence. I need a crowd to be like, you're doing good, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> so I get it in one full weekend, man. Like yesterday was just a fucking love fest, you know, like sitting there talking to folks, signing stuff, taking pictures and whatnot. You all been so absolutely wonderful. And the, I've been to many cons over the course of my life, both as a fan and as a professional. And the difference in this con between this and every other con is everybody here is literally on the same page. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's. If you go to another con, it's like, well, I'm here for fucking Freddy Krueger. It's like, well, I'm here for the bronies and shit like that. Like, <laughs> they faction off and fucking fight and stuff. I I'll take the Freddy Krueger crowd in that yeah, fight, by the way. Fair enough. I guarantee you, I mean, look, I can't, I don't want to guarantee because then somebody will do it just to fuck me over. But <laughs> I can't imagine there being a fight at Chronicon. I can't either. Um, unless, scandalously, you and me broke into one right now. Yes. But other than that, it's just like everybody is here for like the common goal. We all like these terrible movies I've made. So uh, <laughs> some of us have been in them. <laughs> yes. yes. So it's been so fucking blissful and lovely for me. And also I just love like going whimsying and turning it into reality. And I remember long time ago being like, man, wouldn't Chronicon should be real? Like we made a fake one. God, it'd be fun if it was real. And thanks for, to the good folks at Astronomicon, George and Mike. They made it a reality. When I went to Astronomicon last year, they're like, "Do you ever think about doing a con?" And I was like, "When I masturbate, I think about doing a con." <laughs> yes. 
my own con and stuff like that. And so they're like, you know, it's kind of easy to pull off. And we started putting our heads together and we're here. So like, it's one thing for me to like, wouldn't that be great? Um, it's a whole different thing for somebody to be like, here are the mechanics of how that can happen. I'm, I'm just a dreamer. That's literally all I've ever been. And were it not for people like Scott Mosier, uh, who produced all my early movies, or um, Jordan Monsanto, who's taken over since him and whatnot, there's, I, I would just sit there and be like, wouldn't it be great if Jay and Silent Bob made another movie where they did the same things as in the first movie and shit? And I'm, I'm sure most critics would be like, well, fucking stop. Your friends should stop supporting you so fucking stop much. Stop dreaming. Yeah. Stop dreaming. But it, it is, it's, it's like nice when you have somebody to take your idea and, and make it concrete. So please, kids, give it up for George and Mike, man. They made this fucking Yes, happen. thank you, guys. And the results have been like so good and so fun. Like I, I you know, I, it's too early to make a fucking call, but like I can't imagine we don't do this again next year. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and selfishly speaking, it's so fun for us who come here because it's like a family reunion. You know, yeah. I don't think I've seen Genesis Rodriguez since we shot Tusk. That's how long it's been since I've seen her face to face. You know, you text and you say hi and stuff, yeah, but it's so yeah. good to see her and to see uh, Harley and Austin and just the whole gang back together again. It was just a blast. What has it been like for you? Well, would you, when people come up, what do they talk about? Um, They're like, you were amazing when you didn't say shit in Red State. They, a lot of that. <laughs> A lot of Red State posters came up, which was cool. Is that right? I saw a couple uh, yoga hoser, hoser posters, which was nice. Very this, few is the one, the this is the one place where people actually come up and say nice things to me about yoga <laughs> hosers. Even at family functions, people are like, why'd you do it, bro? Yeah. I know, I know you're a whore, but still. <laughs> uh, a guy came up to my desk, um, or the booth rather, yesterday, and he had a Bratzi. He had an actual Bratzi. You remember from the movie when Kevin was a little sausage Nazi? Um, he, had, he had a prop, a prop Bratzi. Everybody's like, that happened? <laughs> Because for a second, I was like, I was? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you were. <laughs> and, of course... Uh, he had one. He actually had yeah. him a cat? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. And, uh, of course, Babylon. You guys have been so sweet about Babylon over the years. Thank you so much. It's been great. <laughs> and our comic book, uh, Batman 66 meets the Green Hornet. I've been, I got I saw, those I, at the I booth. I sent one of those yesterday, and I was like, oh, my God, the other guy's here. He's like, I know. <laughs> So it's been awesome. Yeah, We're man, so happy he, to be here. Everyone's made it so damn wonderful. So hopefully you kids are having as good a time as I am, man. Um, <laughs> wow, yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's a Chronicon miracle. I know, right? They told us you're not going to have any video on the right side, just on your left side. So don't bother, don't bother looking over there. And then boom, it just came on. They, you know what? The good folks here at the Hyatt O'Hare have been absolutely wonderful, man. This is where we're holding uh, Chronicon. Uh, this is where most of us are staying for Chronicon and whatnot. And, you know, it being the first time we've ever done anything, any bumps we've run into, they've been really cool about it. So Amazing. give it up for the fucking O'Hare. Uh, Hyatt yeah. Regency O'Hare. Thank you. Well, what do you say? Let's dive in, shall we? Is it? Oh, yeah. Fuck it. I'm ready to do a show at fucking 1120. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, like, I remember being dragged to church this early and being like, I hate Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, well, not that one. I, you know. Pissing Any off Jesus Buddy Christ that I have there. a financial piece of, I'm all for. <laughs> Speaking of which, you'll be here. As long as Jesus attorney. makes your money, you're in. Exactly, yeah. man. You should have been a preacher, like a televangelist. <laughs> you're fucking right. All the shit I've done. I could have done in one place, church. Exactly. <laughs> and tax exempt. You wouldn't yeah. have to pay taxes. But if you think fucking TV and movies are a failing business, fucking Catholic <laughs> church, they've been on their way down for a long time. Numbers are dwindling. Yeah, I'm happy where I am. Let's start things Plus, off. like, think about it. All the years I've been doing shit. <laughs> oh, I'm the, sorry. All the years that I've been doing shit, never was I once. Neil, eat this fucking wafer. Well, the Neil part, I remember from an audition I did for you. <laughs> Eat this fucking wafer. <laughs> this is in my body. You were Literally. Good. You were good, but not good enough for dialogue. <laughs> then cut to yoga hosers. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> okay, you can have every part. <laughs> I learned a lesson. <laughs> Now's the time where we talk to people in the audience who've come particularly long distances. Well, shit, we've come particularly long distances. We should talk to us. Yeah, yeah. fucking, we are gonna. We're celebrating special occasions with us today. It is time for the shout outs, Will. It's a shout out with Kevin and Brown, so oh, get Will. your cock out. There we go. Yeah. You know what? Year one of Chronicon, sometimes there are bumps. Will's gonna drop it again. Ready? Go. It's a shout out with Kevin and Brown, so get your cock out. Yeah, yeah. Get your cock out. That's how you do it. These mics have no cords. That almost disappeared inside you. <laughs> Imagine that. You'll never get it back. <laughs> Chronicon canceled. Silent Bob chokes to death. <laughs> On, on phallic mic. Silent forever. <laughs> Tonight on Dateline, Silent Bob, really silenced. We speak to the remaining half, J.N. <laughs> uh, Mylene and Gary, are you guys in the uh, house? Still? Well, fuck you then. <laughs> Where do they come from? It's uh, their seventh wedding anniversary. Oh. So they're probably fucking, I guess. <laughs> I would, I would hope. What, they were only, were they coming in from Chicago? Um, I don't know where they were coming from. They just said, it's our seventh anniversary, we're celebrating with you guys. <laughs> no the fuck you're not. <laughs> I, um, I, think, I, I think I know the answer to this, and I'm, I might be, it, it might be a leading question, but like, in terms of the farthest anyone has traveled to come to Chronicon, we definitely have people from all over the country. Yeah. But then we have some people from outside the country. Who came from outside the country? What? Canada doesn't count. Put your hands down. Canada always counts. Canada doesn't count. Put we might have to go down. there in a month. Canada always counts. No, it doesn't. Put your hands up, man. Where were you? Go ahead. Uh, was that whoever was from outside the country? I think we'll he's just there. adjusting his underwear. I don't think he's from outside the country. From where? Brazil? New Zealand. New Zealand. Opposite of Brazil. Welcome. <laughs> yes. A kiwi. Toronto. Toronto. Jesus Absolute. Christ, I just said Canada doesn't no, count. No, Canada counts. <laughs> Absolutely counts. Yeah. yeah. A 14 hour flight 14, from, the, from, from the, the U UAE. UAE. The United Arab You're from UA. <laughs> yeah, I think you win the prize, Majito. 14 hours on a plane to United see United Arab Biden. Emirates. <laughs> Babylon brunch with me and Ralph. It's right. right. But it's probably like midnight where he's from, so it feels right it's for true. him. This might be appropriate. Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome everybody from across the seas. And of course, welcome everybody from within the seas. But not Canada. <laughs> but not Canada. Yes. Uh, is Rob McDonald from Canada here? Oh, you're the guy from Shit. Canada. <laughs> All right, I guess you count now. <laughs> Rob from Mississauga, 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 Ontario, Canada. I got you, Ontario. Four-star general in the Garmy. Well, I take back everything I said <laughs> about Canada. It's my favorite country. And a yoga hoser in that Kevin Smith club. Why, well, thank well, you. There you go. It's my first ever Hollywood Babylon and the earliest ever showtime. You're not fucking kidding, Rob. Since we're in Chicago, I was wondering if Chicago native Harrison Ford can welcome me to, to Chronicon and give me ideas of what to do while I'm here. Well, sure, I'm sure Harrison Ford would be happy to do that. He seems happy to do everything. <laughs> um, you know, no one can come to Chronicon. You know, you know, you know, down there, 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 money, 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 <laughs> money. There you go. That's some advice from Harrison Ford. <laughs> David Robbins, are you? Hi, David Robbins. How are you? My name's David. I'm in attendance at the Hollywood Babylon with my girlfriend Stephanie and her brother Nick and our good friend Kristen. You got a whole crowd. Um, last time Stephanie and I got to see Hollywood Babylon was back at San Diego Comic Con in 2015. Nick's a fan of HBO, but has never seen the show. And Kristen doesn't know what the fuck you guys do. 
We're still trying to figure that out as well. Yeah. Um, she's a huge fan of uh, Batman 66, however, and, and her birthday was this past Sunday. I was hoping Adam West could offer her some belated birthday wishes. David Robbins. First of all, let me say I love your last name, David. Robbins. <laughs> Where's Kristen? Oh, Stephanie. Where's Kristen? <laughs> Just wanted to say hi. Stephanie, happy birthday. I hope you have many more trips around the sun, but stay clear of some evil villains I've seen lurking here around Chronicon. One of them has a giant fist and wants to knock my cock. <laughs> you evil cock knocker. Happy birthday, sweetheart, congratulations. Sean and Jen. Sean Johnson and Jen, are you guys? Hi, guys. Um, we've been together for eight years now, and we've been hinting marriage to each other. You want to see if it's really going to stick or not, Rob? Is that the... Or Sean, rather? I'm sorry. I was wondering if the Germans could stop by and give us the pros and cons of getting married. Thank you so much. Love what you guys do. Give that penis a sandwich. Yeah, remember that? That's a, that's a yeah, throwback. Oh, my God, classic. Right uh, the Germans, sure, they have advice on marriage. Will? There's Batman and Robin and the Ralph Mouth and Potsy. There's Rudiger and Klaus. They're Germans, not Nazis. Yeah, yeah, we are not Nazis in any way. Nein. Except for belonging to the Nazi party. Nein. Uh, marriage, yes, I recommend it highly because it's much like war. Like the Second World War, they would be advancing and then they would be retreating. And then eventually somebody wins and somebody loses. And just like in the Second World War, in your marriage you will lose. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay because with the losing comes the makeup war. <clears throat> and you get to put your howitzer into her tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. That's how it works. And you come in with the Luftwaffe and da 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 da. Don't you put it inside? No, outside. Da 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 da. You strafe bomb her with your juices. Marriage pro, you get a friend for life. Yeah. Marriage pro two, anal. Yeah. Marriage con, anal. Yeah. Then you're the taker, not the giver. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A few to say, you two. A few to say. Andy Williams is Andy Williams here? Hey, right up front. The singer? Yeah. No, it's not. I'm looking at him. It's not. Uh, my name's Andy Williams, attending Chronicon from Milwaukee. Oh shit. Just wish my amazing wife Katie was here with us, but unfortunately, she had to work all weekend. She literally lights up every room she's in. Oh, that's sweet. Will you tell her how I feel about her by singing Can't Take My Eyes Off of You by the singer Andy Williams as Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, I think uh, I know Arnold's a very sentimental guy. I'm sure he'd enjoy singing that. Can we have a little music there, Will? <laughs> You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. <laughs> You'd be like heaven to touch. I want to fuck you so much. <laughs> I'm so glad I, I got laid. And I'm so glad you're my maid. <laughs> you're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. Like ice freeze, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough of that, yeah. As you know, folks always send stuff in to us here at Hollywood Babylon. You can, too, by the email address, hbopodcast at aol.com. Yes, we still use AOL. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you pay for AOL? I, I had a, I, somebody sent me a disc in the mail, I think. Um, <laughs> like fucking 30 years ago. Yeah, that's the, that's the one I use. I, every once in a while, um, uh, Carol, who like runs my world, she's the one that pays the bills and makes sure that I'm not poor and stuff like that because I tend to like spend more, way more than I make. And mm -hmm. stuff. So Carol, 
is, is very officious. She'll be like, what is this $2.30 charge? You know, and you're like, uh, and then you figure it out. So every fucking six months, she goes, are you sure you want to keep paying for AOL? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, how much is it? And she's like, I, I, it's, it's not cheap. She's like, you know, there are other, you can get Hotmail and that's free. The whole world got that 20 years ago. <laughs> I know. We should increase incrementally. Truly. Yes. But I can't let it go because I'm like, I've, 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 this is crazy, but I, especially because I never check email anymore. So this matters not at all. My email address then, now, forever will always be snoogans at AOL.com. Yes. Um, I don't, if I let it go... Someone else will be fucking Snoogans. You're right. You got a and good then point. if I'm like, oh wait, I want to be back, I'm gonna be like Snoogans four eight two three six nine yeah. four. Yes. So I've been holding on to it. Like I had to let go of my childhood phone number because that was my parents' phone and shit. And right. I still regret it to this day because I memorized it when I was a fucking kid. Right. And that's never leaving you. No. No. So I, I can't let go of my AOL. But I'm happy to report I'm not the only one, man. I fucking what was it? Ten, 10 years ago it was at this point, but he still uses it to this day. I got an email from J.J. Abrams, and it was also on AOL. Yes. Yes. Because some of us are still fighting the good fight. Totally, man. Yeah. I was like, what's your excuse? He's like, well, I have five different accounts. What's your excuse? And I was like, I don't want to be Snoogans 487352. <laughs> Snoogans bot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, folks send us in stuff all the time, including when they run across a town with a fucked up name, and we never bothered to name this segment, so we call it Your Town's Got a Fucked Up Name. Craig Robinson in Colchester, England. Oh. Oh, you thought it was the yeah, uh, for a second, I was a comedian? Craig, but he's not there. Unless no. he was like, I'm shooting over in England. I had a really funny idea. <laughs> He is, uh, he's over there in England, and he ran across a road that he thought we'd appreciate. He said, apparently, there's a dangerous gas leak over here. Let's take a look. Yeah, over at Turkey Cock Lane. <laughs> I don't think I want to walk down Turkey Cock Lane. You, you don't want to be the turkey either. No, you don't. Folks also send us stuff that's meant for kids to enjoy, but we have found out as we look at this stuff that these are all inappropriate toys. <laughs> Not appropriate for girls, not appropriate for boys. What the fuck is that? Inappropriate toys. Seth Kano ran across this on eBay looking at some um, old toys, antique toys. Not all toys age well. I think this one for kids probably didn't. Can we show this? Yeah. That's the. <laughs> oh, shit. Can we punch in on that, Will, a little bit? It's the uh, Michael Jackson rub and play <laughs> transfer set. <laughs> which I think is what investigators called a DNA swab, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Exhibit A, Your Honor. Um, Do you remember the rub and play sets? Of course, yeah. Like, there was a time when... I had, I had a set this morning. <laughs> I mean, a, ru a rub and play oh. set. Yeah, yeah. It's like, is that how you fucking, like, when you're at peace, you're just like, now a <laughs> nope. flower is where there was none. I was rubbing and playing. Rub and play was a sheet, and you'd put it down on another sheet of paper, and you'd just rub off what was on the sheet, and it would stay on the other sheet of paper. That was because we didn't have the internet. That's right. Those were, <laughs> those were simpler times. Remember color forms? Fuck yeah. They well, were, that's, I mean, like, you know, fuck the rub and play. Color forms is ingenious. Piece of plastic, you would stick on another piece of plastic. Yes. And then you'd pull it off, and then you'd stick it back and on again. you could put them in different fucking places. Yep. Yeah, and they wonder why so many of our generation grew up to kill people. That's right. <laughs> or turn to drugs, because we're, we're fucking bored. Uh, this one came from Morgan Heldman. Apparently he was looking for some... Um, party favors for a three-year-old birthday party. Okay. And he came across these at a uh, dollar store. These are all surprise... Oh, oh, nope, sorry. That came, that came from uh, Drew in Perth, Australia. He said uh, this was... He was shopping for his kids and came across this. And I, I think that's inappropriate to get a kid the light cock. <laughs> light cock? Yeah. Yeah, you always want to get a kid hard cock. No. Yeah. You want to... You want to train him early to take the heavy cock, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Too. I guess that is the opposite of light, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh, this one, uh, Morgan Hellman came across these looking for uh, party favors for a three-year-old birthday party. These were surprises that came in packages at a dollar store, like bananas. You'd peel them, and there'd be a surprise inside. And he said, well, those would be fun for, for three-year-olds, until they opened them up and then did the peeling, and that's, what, that's <laughs> what's inside. Yeah. 
He said it's not a party until a bunch of three-year-olds are waving dildos around. (laughs) Open up another pack, it's got batteries in it. Yeah, it's a whole different kind of party, really. (laughs) I've seen a party like that, but it was not involving three-year-olds. It was... I mean, is one of those dildos made of popcorn? (laughs) I mean, I I can't... I I don't want to mansplain, but I don't think that'd be pleasurable at all. Don't kink shame. Some people like popcorn. Just saying. Fair enough. Yeah. Hey, gang, it's Ralph here. As you know, I just got back from Chicago and Chronicon. And you know, when it comes to traveling, I never know what to pack, especially when it comes to hygiene products. Do I have to bring the little tiny shampoo and a face wash and a body wash and deodorant and shaving cream? I just don't have room for all that. That's why I'm so glad the folks at Mando have the four-in-one acidified cleansing bar. I took it with me to Chicago. It was amazing. It's a little five-ounce bar that does the work of a shampoo, a face wash, a body wash, and a deodorant. And you can even use it to create a nice, rich shaving lather. So technically, it's a five-in-one. It is clinically proven to control odor for 24 hours. It is formulated with a gentle, alpha hydroxy acid that stops odor at its source. Now, regular soap can't do that because the pH is too high. And I don't know what pH is or what an alpha hydroxy acid is. All I know is it works. It simplified my hygiene routine. It's the only thing I needed to pack. And you can get it in three cologne quality scents. You can get the Mount Fuji, which is fresh and woodsy. You can get the Pro Sport, which is clean and citrusy. Or my personal favorite, the bourbon leather, which is sweet and sophisticated. And you know, I love me some bourbon. So if you like me want to make it much easier to pack when you go on a trip, you got to try Mando's four in one acidified cleansing bar. And here's the good news. If you're a new customer to Mando, you can get $5 off their best selling starter pack with our code Babbel at shopmando.com. I really recommend this stuff. It worked great for me. It was created by a doctor. It's American made, and you know what? It's got none of the garbage in it that most deodorants do. No aluminum, no baking soda, no dye. It's even vegan. Kevin can use it. For clinical proven odor control that's better than a shower with soap alone, you got to check it out. Get yourself a Mando starter pack right now at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. And... If you're a brand new customer, you'll get $5 off the starter pack with our exclusive code BABBEL. That's like 40% off your starter pack. Go to shopmando.com, use our code BABBEL, show your support for the show, and tell uh, the folks at Mando that we sent you. We like to look at mistakes, boneheaded um, uh, mistakes, errors, things that happen in movies and TV shows that someone should have caught, but they didn't. We call those shit that should not be. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. All right, Ray Polakowski sent this one in. He said this was... Oh, my God. You're goddamn right. You're right. My God. I'd rather take Normally, the, I don't get to do that shit until afternoon. I'd rather take the popcorn dildo. <laughs> I was watching Scooby-Doo in an episode called To Switch a Witch, and the gang goes into a cemetery. I think we got the picture. Oh, look at that cemetery. They're sure going in. When they went back to the ceremony, writes Ray... Apparently, ghosts had decided to change the spelling of cemetery to fuck with the mystery machine. Look at that. Like, zoink, scoop, ghost can't spell. (laughs) Roinks. Exquisite acting. We love it when acting goes over the top. Not all bad acting, however, is bad. Some of it goes all the way around to become exquisite acting. To be or not to be. That is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. All right. Uh, Hi, guys. I've been watching all the James Bond movies in order. 
And I realized that the exquisite overacting of Donald Pleasance as Blofeld in You Only Live Twice has given birth to 60 years of bad Bond villain impressions. This is from Danny Cantwell in London. This truly is spectacular. Donald Pleasance going way over the top as Blofeld in You Only Live Twice. You made a mistake, my friend. No astronaut would enter the capsule carrying his air conditioner. Remove his helmet. James Bond, allow me to introduce myself. I am Ernst Stavro Blofeld. They told me you were assassinated in Hong Kong. Yes, this is my second life. You only live twice, Mr. Bond. I love how he moves the henchman out of the way. I cannot see my arch enemy, could you please? <laughs> Excuse me, number seven, could you just step to the left a, a bit? I'm, I'm cra I have to crank my neck, it's very uncomfortable. I have this cat on my lap, could you please? Oh, James Bond, so good to see you again. To spend years of your life devising a plan, only to have it fucking interrupted by a guy who's standing, standing right in your, your way. way. Be like, just, I, I fucking move. Excuse me, I just, I like your pushy. How did he not say that in that scene, That's by the true. way? That's true. Low-hanging fruit. Uh, we like to take a look at entertainment news, of course, every time we gather together in a little segment we call The Headlines. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines. And give me head. Um, um, um. Variety has come out this week with a list of the top ten horror movies of all time. And Tusk. Not in the top 10, but I'm sure it's like 11. Jersey Girl? <laughs> well, no, but Yoga Hosers made the list. Yeah. Well, that's good. No. Uh, these apparently are the top 10, in their opinion, horror movies of all time. And Remember, it is start, that. Starting it, from 10, descending. Yeah, order. starting from 10. This is the season, so I thought we'd go through them. Number 10, Carrie from 1976. Brian De Palma's Carrie. Yeah, I'd say that's top 10. I agree. Strong. One of the great. Plug it up, plug it up. That's horrible. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, one of the great endings of all time for a horror movie as well. Yeah. The thing, that launched a thousand ships as well. It's truly the non-ending ending. Number nine, uh, 120 Days of Sodom from 1975. This is an Italian film, apparently. Yeah, by Salo. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pasolini. Yeah. That made the top... Look I mean, you it know is... all kinds of shit about movies and whatnot. I used to be a filmmaker. Um, I remember uh, when I was a kid, he was all the rage and stuff uh, as a young filmmaker because this movie, Salo, or, 120 day, or The 120 Days of Solemn, Sodom, uh, is about like, kids that were uh, like, abused in a monastery or a nunnery. Or yeah, there's 18 teenagers they bring in and sexually torture them. It's, look, a horrifying movie, um, and it was meant to provoke. Yes. Um, it's very provocative. But I, I would never in my life classify that as, as a horror movie. Horrifying, but not really horror, horror movie. Mm. Is that what the list is? Top 10 horror movies? Horror movies, yeah. Yeah. That's more of like a disturbing film, but you know, I guess that counts as well. Number eight, Frankenstein, the original Frankenstein from 1931. I mean, you know, like, of, like out of respect, sure. But mm. Exactly. Mm. Mm. Like, when we were kids, that was easy, but, like, could you imagine trying to frighten a modern child with, like, his head is flat. He's got bolts in his neck. That don't scare you? Fuck. <laughs> Wait till he throws him in a lake. Man, that, yeah, that'll scare the shit true. out of him. But, yeah, I mean, a classic, but I wouldn't call that horror. Uh, a Japanese film named Audition was at number seven. It's about a woman who gets auditioned to be a rich man's wife, and she wins the uh, role, and then she turns the tables on him and terrifies him. It's like marriage. So, yeah. <laughs> Night of the Living Dead at number six. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that, that should be higher. Uh, huge, massive, not just a horror film, but massive for independent film. Uh, low budget, self-financed, and it's one of the highest grossing independent films uh, of all time. Now public domain for some fucking strange reason. Really? Yeah. Created a genre, too. I mean, the, zo the zombie film. Yeah, fucking George Romero walked so that Robert Kirkman can jet around the world. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Private. With walking dead money. Yeah. Number five, Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, that's terrifying. Oh, a brilliant movie. Yeah. And very scary as well. Um, I, uh, largely, I just think because... Oh, my God, they were both 1968. 
a good year for her. Truly. Uh, who's the old lady in that that terrifies me? Ruth Gordon. Ruth Gordon, yeah. yeah. She's always fucking scary. Yeah. Even in the Clint Eastwood monkey movie, she scared me. <laughs> I get my fucking Oreos. I'm like, ah, I shit myself. It's terrifying. Fucking, you got a Ruth Gordon impression you've been hiding all these years? <laughs> 15 I know, years of doing this show, you never once break out your Ruth there's Gordon. There's been so much call for it, too. It's going to give us another 15 years of life, that <laughs> Ruth Gordon right there. Number four, a movie called Jaws. Yeah. Absolutely. Is that a horror movie, do you think? Fuck, man. If, so if Solo is considered one, absolutely. But I, even without Solo on that list, Jaws is a horrifying fucking movie. Yeah, I suppose. Sure, the shark looks rubbery, but like, you know, fucking, you don't see that until over you're, halfway through the movie. You're already scared at that yeah. point. I, look, proof positive, maybe I'm an outlier, but I still don't go in the fucking ocean. And I'm 54, so I saw that movie 49 years ago, and I'm like, wow, that did a number, you know? Did you go in the ocean before you saw Jaws? Yeah, I lived, I grew up on the water. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I grew up in the ocean. I did. I, I thought you were I, Aquaman for a second. My father was a <laughs> lighthouse keeper. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, that terrified me out of the water. So man, that did its fucking job right there. Number three, Psycho, Hitchcock's Psycho. Yeah, that's, that's got to be in, in the top, top three. He was doing something nobody was doing at the time, and he's doing, he was doing something that everyone's been doing ever since. And to make it in a mainstream film that was considered, you know, not a horror film in, you know, in classification, just, a, just another movie that and he he wasn't out. known as a horror filmmaker. Not at all. And then to be like, hey, Janet Lee's going to be in it, and people are like, this is going to rock, and then 10 minutes later, like, what the fuck? Right. That really put people off, you know? Was, was, and then, of course, years later, it gave us Anne Heche's butthole, too. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 I just saw... There's applause for Anne Heche's butthole. It always will be. Yes, in, mem um, in memoriam. Yes. I just saw an interview uh, with Gus Van Sant where somebody asked him, he was the one that did the Psycho remake. That's right. And so, you know, it was almost shot for shot and, and, and it was controversial at the time because people were like, why would you bother doing this? And the reason they gave at that moment was like, uh, Psycho is a black and white movie, nobody watches black and white movies. And I was like, my whole career is predicated on black and white <laughs> That's movies. That's true. But so Gus, you know, went forward that he, with the credibility, with the clout, with the success that he got from Goodwill Hunting, he could do anything. This is what he choose, chose to do, was to remake Psycho. So the guy asked him recently, like, how does it feel like all these years later, and, and why'd you do it? And Gus Bonsant goes, I just want to see what would happen. Wow. It's kind of, kind of arty, man. That's kind of cool. Some people just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Exorcist at number two. That would be my number one. Absolutely. That's still terrifying to me. I yeah. give it up for The Exorcist, absolutely. Your mother's not scots in hell. <laughs> That's what everybody remembers about that Because it's awesome. Because we all don't want to think about our mothers sucking cocks in hell. All the <laughs> ultimate fear. There, it, there she is now. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, even the devil goes for mother jokes. Yeah, because that's, that's where we're our most vulnerable. near and dear. And at number one, any guesses at number one? Not the shine. Not even in the top ten. I was not the omen either. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Absolutely. Hands down. Talk about inventing a genre. Truly. And also, like, kind of predated the found footage genre, because that movie feels very much like a documentary. At yes, time. it does. That kind of puts you in that world. Oh, hands down. And another insanely successful low-budget film. Yep. You didn't have a studio back at him. Toby Hooper was like, let's just make this movie. And it changed everything. Speaking of horrifying, this story came out. The late Lisa Marie Presley has uh, released a posthumous memoir called From Here to the Great Unknown. And in it are many stories about her life that no one had known before. And this one is horrifying to me. She um, brought in a tattoo artist because when her late son uh, took his own life, she wanted to have the tattoos from his body matched for her body. She wanted to represent him by getting the same tattoos on her body that he had on his. Copy. And so she brought in a tattoo artist. And the tattoo artist said, I'm happy to do this. What a nice way to remember your son. Do you have any photos of the tattoos? And she said, oh, I can do better than that. And she brought him into a room, and there was her son on dry ice, where she had been keeping him for two months in her home. That should be on the variety list of the top ten most well, horrifying films of all time. I mean, you know, everyone grieves in their own way, but heavens. Right? Yeah. If I ever die, don't do that to me. I'm asking you, please. 
Feel Unless I'm propped up with like a drink in my hand, that'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> you can do that. Yeah. Can I have you bottomless? Because <laughs> that'd be hilarious. They're like, he's dead and his balls are out. Oh my God, he was right. They were huge. I'm terrified what you would get bored and then come into the room with me with no pants on. What would happen? I just don't want to think about it. You'd that. be my time passer, like this little <laughs> click, 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 <laughs> click, click, click. Sit me on your desk. <laughs> yes. uh, also in the news, Martha Stewart has made the confession that she cheated on her husband early in their 29 year marriage. She made uh, this shocking revelation in the Netflix documentary that's coming out about her life. She said regarding men who cheat, they are pieces of shit. Regarding her own affair, she said, yeah, I don't think he ever knew about that. <laughs> Double standard, yeah, apparently. Yeah, that's yes. how they build an empire. It so is. wait, they're not married anymore. They are not. They, uh, they split, um, I don't know, a couple years ago, apparently. He knows now, though. <laughs> And good news for Freaky Friday fans. Anybody like the original Freaky Friday with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan? Well, easy now. That's not the original. I know. Jodie Foster and Barbara there you go. Harris. Barbara yeah, Harris. But, uh, A lot of people love that one with, uh, with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. And she's, of course, riding high after her Oscar. And then they said they were making another one. Yes. And uh, Disney has just announced the release date. Circle your calendars. Uh, August 8th. 2025 will be the release date for Freakier Friday, is what they're calling it. Freakier Friday. Disney says if this wow. goes well... <laughs> they took it one step further. See what they've done? And they're setting us up for Freakiest Friday Exactly. Ever. They said if it goes well, there'll be a third in the trilogy. Freakiest Friday, where they switch bodies and then fuck each other. <laughs> Which would be freaky. That would be freaky. I, if you want to make some money right now, somebody should really take the domain name freakiestfriday.com before yes. fucking they get in there. Oh, I'm sure Disney's got that already. I don't know. They're not that quick anymore. <laughs> they probably like laid off a whole division that does that sort of thing. I get a sense that you people wouldn't mind if we take a look at some geek news. Is that a possibility? Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kevin, Ralph and Kev. Geek news. There we go. Uh, we have a new Green Lantern. Last, last week when we did Hollywood Babylon, we talked about Kyle to Chandler, who's going to be Hal Jordan in the new Lanterns TV series. Only one Lantern that'll ever be Ryan fucking Reynolds. Oh, my God. <laughs> Even Ryan Reynolds made it clear how he felt about Green Lantern. Yes. Deadpool 2. Uh, the premise behind the series is it's going to be like a true detective. Remember that when that was on HBO and made all those waves? About two interstellar cops who are working on a case in uh, the Midwest of America you know, on a farm or some shit. That's, that's fucking good because when I watched True Detective, the only thing I thought the whole time was like, this would be better if they both had magic rings. <laughs> that's true. I thought the same thing. <laughs> Why the fuck does that make sense for this story? I can't like, imagine. Like, I get here. This is the way it makes sense because cheaper. Like, that's true. Because if they were to really do Green Lantern shit, they'd be on green screens and in Flying space. Flying in shit. space and going to other planets. I'm all for it. I ain't shitting on it. I can't wait to watch it. But it's like... Anytime they do Green Lantern in a cartoon, it's like limitless imagination. Your imagination can make this ring do anything. Right. And he's like a giant catcher mitt or something <laughs> like that. And it's like, if you really wanted to, to fuck with people, you know what you do? Project like their mother sucking cock in hell. Yeah, it would work. Just like yeah, that. Would work. Yes. Whole world's like, oh my God. Um, now we have the new Jon Stewart as well. It's an actor named Aaron Pierce. I think we have a picture of him. Nice. He's the. It's like he walked out of a fucking comic book. That yeah. guy. I think his eyes are even glowing green, if I'm not mistaken, in real life. <laughs> Aaron Pierce from uh, Rebel Ridge, and he was also in the series Krypton. If anybody watched that, no, no one watched that. Yeah, that's why it's not on anymore. <laughs> Blew um, up just like the planet. Apparently, he will be playing the younger partner to Hal Jordan in the new Lantern series. Fucking hey, man. Well, they've been threatening for a while the Green Lantern series. Looks like we're finally gonna get it, and that'd be cool. Some Star Wars fans are upset. <laughs> well, that's not news, really. <laughs> they oh, they just there. found out that fucking Darth Vader's Luke's father. <laughs> yes. Spoilers. I know. That's not con. That's not you retcon that. <laughs> uh, they're very upset about a new book called Star Wars: The Secrets of the Clone Troopers, where apparently there is a transgender stormtrooper in the book named Sister, and uh, people are furious. Furious about it, Kevin. Because they can't skip that page? Uh, 
I know that's frustrating too when it's like, I cannot turn this fucking page I don't want to read. Oh, I guess, guess I better read it. Fuck, this makes me mad. Just like fucking move on. Man. Too woke. A lot of people are screaming. Uh, some people say I, it's... I, I remind people that this is a franchise that started with a female lead who used a gun at a time where that wasn't popular in, in fucking fiction. So it's like this franchise has always been quote unquote woke. Yeah. And the idea of saving the damsel in distress was upended in the very first fucking movie where exactly. she turned out to be like one of the most powerful characters. She's so, the hero for sure. Yeah, if they're woke, they've been woke for a minute now. Uh, the stormtrooper expresses her identity differently than her fellow troopers. That's the description in the book. And some people just won't have that because stormtroopers are real and they have to be one way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um... So that would be, I mean, you really want to piss the fans off? Be like, hey, not only is there a transgender stormtrooper, the transgender stormtrooper has perfect aim. Yeah, she hits, <laughs> she hits everything she yeah, aims They'll be at. like, oh, you son of a bitch! Fans are all over the internet screaming. One said, disgusting and lore-breaking. Well, I think they make the lore, don't they? The people who write those <laughs> books and stuff? <laughs> I thought, like, I thought you were going lore break, and I was like, is that your Illinois or Chicago coming out? They broke the lore. lore. Like, hey, are you from lore enforcement? No, no. <laughs> lore, lore, enforcement. lore. The legend. The lore. The lore, the legend. I mean, they change the fucking lore all the time. Like, all I knew is that one day Princess Leia was like, help me, stranger Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. And years later, they were like, we're best friends. <laughs> yes. Uh, Disney should be ashamed of themselves, says one disgruntled fan. Look, I, I don't disagree, but not for this reason, for many other reasons. Yeah, really. For the live-action Lilo and Stitch alone, I think, should be the reason. Have you... Did you see what he looks like? The live-action He Stitch? looks cute, does he? They, they did, like, you know, is that D23 or whatever, Celebration, one of those things where they show previews and whatnot. Right. And so they had him, a giant, they had him on the screen, then he was giant size and ate the screen and shit. He looks pretty fucking good. I've lost you. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, just like he... It, they didn't Sonic this motherfucker. <laughs> they didn't? They didn't have giant chompers or right anything? Right out the bat. They were like, we know we're treading on holy territory. So he literally looks like the cartoon. He looks like Stitch. Yeah. Just 3D Stitch. Now, interestingly enough, the little girl yes. looks like an 82-year-old man. No, no way! That's <laughs> But they're going to fix that with CG later mistake. on. Yeah, well, they went woke, Ralph. I don't know what to tell you. And uh, Deadpool and Wolverine coming out on uh, physical media on October 22nd. You'll be able to get an actual physical media copy of Thank that. God, because we all have to support independent film. That's right. <laughs> Look, Ryan Reynolds' gin business isn't going to run itself, kids, <laughs> all right? The 430 movie, my most recent endeavor, came out on the same day. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> That's why I like Chronicon. That's the only time you're like, 430 movie, and people go, I know what that is. Yeah. That's better than Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> we came out the, the same day on digital as Deadpool and Wolverine, and naturally they launched at number one, and we launched, we launched. Le less than one. Yeah. Less than one. We launched all over the screen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it's, it's, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the 430 movie was over by 433. Oh, come on. A wonderful, sweet little flick. But yes, we came out on the same day, and I didn't know that. I was like, all right, a movie's coming out. I can't wait to go promote it digitally. And one of the first tweets I saw when I woke up was like, sucks to have your movie come out the same day as Deadpool Wolverine, bro. And I was like, it is? Fuck. Yeah. And then in my head, I heard that music. <laughs> yeah. Look at Will Wilkins, man, on the button. Let's hear for Will Wilkins, who's running our sound and sights tonight. Netheads himself. The good news about um, the physical media is that we get a bunch of bonus scenes that we haven't seen in the film. I'm very, I'm very excited about that. I hope they... So they're saying, even though they've released the movie digitally, when they release it on physical media, they're going to be like, you're going to see shit you've never seen. A bunch saw. of deleted scenes they're promising That's us. That's a reason to buy it. Including one with Rob Delaney, who of course plays Peter in that film. I think he's terrific. Speaking of Rob Delaney... Is anyone else watching Bad Monkey over on Apple Plus? How Have is you it? been watching that? No, how is it? It's so fucking great, it's so based charming. On a book series or something? Yeah, uh, Carl Eis Eisen, I think is the guy's name is. He writes a bunch of um, sort of um, crime 
semi-comic crime films about Florida, apparently. I mean, there's nothing funny about crime in Florida, by the way. <laughs> um, Unless it's like an alligator holding up a gas station. That's hilarious. Uh, I think there's a movie in the making. Somebody's going to take, uh, take a poll. Truly. Gator crime, yes, or great gator crime, no? It's called choplifting. <laughs> choplifting! <laughs> you just saw writing in action, kids. Um, take yeah. my money. <laughs> but it's Vince Vaughn and, um, and uh, Rob Delaney, and uh, it's just a great cast, and it's just charming and funny, and just Vince Vaughn back in a way that we haven't seen him in a while. So you, you, sold, you just sold a ticket, man. I've Check been passing it, it all this time, so go, I'm going to get go to watch. watch. Can I give it. you a recommendation? Yeah, please. Um, Apartment 7A, the Rosemary's Baby prequel. Oh, right, yeah. That they did really good. Really? And I say that as a massive Rosemary's Baby fan. It's Me like, too. You better not fuck with this, but it dovetails very nicely. You're going to have the devil's baby. <laughs> Is she in that? Is Literally she... brought it up just so you can <laughs> do your Ruth Gordon for the <laughs> second time ever. Um... And also, I, this is not, it, it is a quick watch, but I, I wanted to talk to you before. You don't fuck with SNL anymore, right? Unless, mm. like, something goes viral. Clips. It's all clips for Last me. Last week, since Andy Samberg came back and he started doing Doug Emhoff. Right, right. Um, since he's back, they did, like, a kind of digital SNL short. They did this fucking short called Sushi Glory Hole. <laughs> which, honestly, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a professional in business 30 years and shit. I cannot stop fucking watching it. <laughs> A, it is such a fucking banger of a song. Yeah. But B, it's just like hilarious in its presentation, man. And it's literally, it's two dudes who walk into a room to pitch to a committee the idea of a sushi glory hole. And, and Andy Sandberg starts off with sushi glory hole. Imagine that. <laughs> and his expression on imagine that like has captivated me to the point where I'm like, this is one of the most brilliant performers we have. <laughs> And he must be protected, man. I can't stop fucking watching it. When we're done, we'll fucking go watch it in the back. And you will fucking crack Oh, it. I see where this is all yes. leading. Yeah. Oh, I got a glory hole movie I want you to watch. <laughs> it's really funny. You're going to like it. Oh, yeah, Andy Samberg's in it later. Let's watch the first part together, though, with no pants on. I know you roll. I'm an idiot. Let's act this out, Ralph. Yeah, oh, it's sushi glory hole. I'll be the sushi. <laughs> You know me, like, I've fucking never eaten fish in my life. Yeah. The song's so funny, I was like, I might have to try sushi. <laughs> Through a hole in a bathroom. <laughs> then I remember I was vegan. I was like, that's never going to happen. Yeah. Um, Rob Delaney, however, as Peter, one of the bonus scenes is him falling in love with uh, Loki star, I want to get her name right, Wunmi Masaku. She played um, one of the, uh, she B-15, one of the, uh, oh, yeah, the, the folks from the AT... A a a TVA. T ATM. ATM. TVA. SUV. <laughs> Law and order. Um, here they are falling in love. It's charming. Here's, this, here's the clip. Thanks for your help with that Laura thing. Uh, we don't speak of that. Um. Fellas, daddy's in love. All right, scooch over, guys. <laughs> How cute is that? Sweet, very sweet. Yeah. All right, before we say goodbye and see you out there on the Chronicon floor, we have a last bit of business we got to take care of. Liam Neeson, of course, our favorite actor with one of the biggest penises in Hollywood. It's time to take a look at your facts about Liam Neeson's cock. Oh, we can't help but wonder How big is Liam Neeson's cock? Wie groß ist am Liam Neeson's penis? That's right. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, big that you hardly notice that one testicle is larger than the other five. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big the National Weather Service has just upgraded his orgasm to a Category 3. <laughs> My mom was in that zone. Uh, I, I'm so sorry. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? This year, election officials have registered it as an official ballot drop box. You can just go by and put your ballot in. It's very convenient. 
Well, I'm you know, sure there'll be lots of people checking on those ballots at that <laughs> There's going to be one watching very carefully as you stick your hand in the urethra. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Liam won the Chicago Marathon last year when he crossed the finish line while standing at the starting line. <laughs> Zip. I won. I won. Record time. <laughs> and lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big Inspired by Kevin Smith, next year Liam will welcome thousands inside his penis for Cockacon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Quaticon, have you had a good time this morning? Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. We can't thank you enough for waking up this early and coming to hang out, but there is no show without the magic man beside me. Kids, give it up for the Garmy legend, Ralph fucking Garmin. Let's hear it for my bestest buddy and babble brother, Mr. Kevin Smith. And that is Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck off. Babble the fuck off. Good on. Good morning, Chicago. This is the cat. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Sal Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Cheers, you!